Hey guys, welcome back. It's Meg and welcome to the 10.2 Miss Weaver Mythic Plus Guide. Today we will be going over our stats, core abilities, talents, cooldowns, rotation and triage, our strengths and weaknesses, and then at the end we will do some recommended weak wars and add-ons. Stat-wise, this is what we are looking at. Haste is our best stat due to our hot tick rate, faster cast, lower global cooldown, and quicker DPS rotation, as well as some value during our celestial rotation. Critical Strike contributes to damage and healing, as well as some manatee interactions, and that is a fairly important stat, so that's about equal with Haste this tier. Versatility also contributes to damage and healing, but it's at a smaller level, but it does also provide some survivability, so that's something that you're going to want to focus on in high-end medley plus when you're concerned with one-shots. Mastery is not necessarily a bad stat, but it does only provide healing throughput, so you'll see a lot of Mistweavers run a higher mastery early on in the season before tuning passants happen so that we can easily handle the overtune dungeons while we're still under geared and learning mechanics, but this drops off heavily after tuning passants happen in favor for more crit and verse. When it comes to our core healing abilities, we have our Gust of Mist. This is our mastery. The higher mastery the two run, the more you're going to see the impact of the spell. It is applied through Renewing Mist, Enveloping Mist, Vivify, Main Target, and then also Chi-G and Revival. Gust of Mist from the player and Gust of Mist from Chi-G will show up as different abilities in details or in logs, but they are both affected by mastery. Essence Font is a little bit of an AoE heal that isn't really used rotationally, but when you're talented into upwelling, it can be used as triage when you're on the move or out of other abilities and cooldowns. This will also leave a hot behind, which is also called Essence Font, and this is applied through Phalanx Stomp or through Essence Font. The hot does a minimal amount of healing, but the players with the hot will receive double healing from Gust of Mist, which is the important part. Essence Font and Feyline will also trigger Ancient Teachings, and this is mostly a maintenance heal ability, but it represents well overall. So you're not going to rely on this ability to heal heavy damage events, but it is going to be probably your highest heal over the course of a dungeon, as well as a bulk of your maintenance healing, because it is a damage to healing ability. Feyline Stomp is the other ability that triggers Ancient Teachings and Essence Font. I do have a weak aura to let you know when you're standing in it, I have that at the end of the video because it does hide behind mechanics and it's very important that you're in it as much as possible. On use, this deals damage and applies hot, but after the initial hits, only your character needs to be in it to benefit from the effects. With the use of Ancient Concordance and Awakened Feline, this ability allows us to cleave our blackout kicks, as well as get multiple hits on Tiger Palm, as well as heal through Spinning Crane Kick. So this is a very good ability to be using in dungeons, and then Ancient Teachings also greatly benefits from this spell. This is where a lot of our healing is going to come from overall. Soothing Mist itself does minimal healing, but it is a good tool to make Vivify and Enveloping Mist instant. It is only used when you need to cast more than one ability on the same player. Vivify is our main single target heal, but it also can function as an AoE heal, as it will cleave onto targets with Renewing Mist. Enveloping Mist is another single target heal, but it isn't really used rotationally, very similar to Essence Font. It's pretty much only used during our Celestials or during heavy single target damage. Renewing Mist is our hot portion. This is something that we want to keep active on the party all of the time. Targets healed by Vivify will also be healed for a proportion when Renewing Mist is active on the target, and this is a hot that also gets extended with Rising Mist and allows us to set up for upcoming group wide damage. Shailen's Gift is a large group-wide heal that with the correct talents will either give you a buff or will recharge faster. This is kind of a cooldown but kind of not since it is more of a recharge type ability based on the number of stacks as your time is spent in combat. So this is our primary group-wide healing button. And then we have Expel Harm as our last ability. This is a really potent self-heal. It is only a self-heal now, and it does do a small amount of damage, but the damage isn't going to be worth it to use purely for the damage that it does, so this is just going to be a really big single-target self-heal. Tiger Palm is a basic single-target ability. It will strike the target. It will also give a stack of teachings of the monastery per hit. Blackout Kick is the spender for the stacks that Tiger Palm builds. This is going to be used fairly often. It is also integral for our GG rotation, which is our main cooldown, and it will heal through Ancient Teachings. 
Rising Sun Kick is our hardest hitting single target ability. It also is used pretty much on CD, especially on single target, to extend our hots through Rising Mist. It is often used with Thunder Focus T for the shortened cooldown. And then Spinning Crane Kick, this is our basic AoE. We use this on five or more targets for the highest damage, and it will also contribute some healing if you're using the correct Feyline talents. Most of the time, this is going to be your highest represented damage ability overall throughout a dungeon. And then we have Zen Pulse, which is technically mixed use as it also has a healing component, but it's almost always used on the tank or melee DPS just because they're going to be around the most mobs to be able to hit the most mobs. With Zen Reverberation, the talent that we have access to, it will hit for 80% of the original duration, so you'll get two hits of this, and this represents well overall for damage, and it can also be used as a really heavy single target heal in the correct circumstances. This is about the tree that I'll be running. There's a couple of things that may change here and there by a point or two, but generally this is what it's going to be looking like. It doesn't vary a whole lot. The few changes that I would make are maybe dropping Resonant Fists for one point and either save them all or bounce back or both, as well as dropping a point in the nodes for Paralysis if we need that for a specific dungeon or Affix. I am really not a big fan of the situation regarding the Fort Brew talents, but in order to reach Strength of Spirit, we need to, and since Improved Touch of Death is really not something we want, this is what we end up taking. With this tree or some variants of it, you're going to have a high defensive stat, as well as making sure that we are hitting all the important damage nodes without giving up survivability or throughput. I will also have the imports for the talents available in the description of this video. And then for our spec tree, this one also doesn't vary a whole lot. The changes that you could potentially make are taking Resplendent Mist instead of Secret Infusion for more passive throughput, or the Tea of Plenty or Tea of Serenity, though I don't recommend using those ever. I still recommend taking Secret Infusion, and it allows more control over your circumstances and you can make decisions about your stats based on what's happening. This tree is the standard GG and Feyline stomp build that we've been playing basically since Season 1. It is super versatile when it comes to adjusting to different situations, and our damage and healing are very high with this build. This isn't to say that you couldn't change a few things around, but the major key points of this are TG, the Feyline Stomp nodes, and Ancient Teachings. I would not recommend builds that don't use those talents. Most of your healing will come from Ancient Teachings and Shailen's Gift, and inside of cooldowns, TG will provide group-wide throughput in a few different ways. If you do want more info on the Celestials and their rotations and how they work, I do have a full video that goes over Shiji and Yulon, as well as some of the variations for them for both Mythic Plus and for Raid. And just as a small side note before we move on from these talents, I do think that running up walling is going to be more beneficial for a majority of players. However, I still will be playing Secret Infusion in most of my high keys just because that percent verse on demand is really valuable, but upwelling can act as more throughput if that's something that you are struggling with. For our cooldowns, we actually have a lot to work with. TG is our main cooldown. This is large group-wide throughput that can be bursty through the Gust of Mist or more maintenance focused with HOTS supplemented by smaller gusts. Like I just mentioned previously, I do have a full video going over the use of Chi Chi with Jade Bond and with Gift if you're interested in the rotation and the additional mechanics for him. I also have a Google Sheet where I will keep track of the things that Chi Chi and Tiger's Lust interact with with their freedom type abilities, and on that same sheet there's actually also one for diffuse damage interactions, and that is going to be updated throughout the season. I will have that in the description as well. But GG is very versatile, it is a very short cooldown as well, so this is a really nice cooldown that can kind of cover anything, even if you can't get into melee range. Revival is a one-off button, there really isn't a whole lot to talk about. It can be used as a mass dispel or a heal depending on your needs, and it will dispel anything that we can dispel, that being magic, poison, and disease. This can be used as a heal if you are during high movement. If you are also running upwelling, you can use your Thunder Focus C, Essence Font, and Revival and have some really quick topping of the group, but it isn't sustained healing, so you're going to need to be able to plant and heal after that. So it's kind of a niche button, but it also can be a game changer. Shailen's Gift, again, isn't really a cooldown in the traditional sense, it's more of a recharge type situation, but it is very flexible. It is a basic group wide heal and it really packs a punch, so if you need it, you can use it as a single target heal, but is generally better suited for AoE. 
you can also precast this if you know that there's going to be a lot of movement soon and just want everyone at full health before that mechanic. And then lastly, we have Life Cocoon. This is a basic single target absorb that can be used either as a personal, an external, and occasionally a tank defensive, but typically it does serve DPS and healers better. This is the rotation breakdown for healing. I don't like calling it a rotation because it's more of a priority system, but for single target we are going to use Soothing Mist into Enveloping Mist and then spam Vivify into that single target. The Enveloping Mist and the Vivify in this situation are all going to be instant because of the Soothing Mist interaction. Or you can use Shaylin's Gift if you have enough stacks. I don't usually use it below around 7 if I can help it, but that is another option. If it is a tank a, or a melee player, or just someone that happens to have a lot of mobs around them, you can also use Zen Pulse with Echoing Reverberation, and that will give them a nice heal. And then you can follow up with either Shaylin's or the Soothing Mist rotation. For 2-3 to three target, this is very similar to the single target rotation. You can Soothing Mist, Enveloping Mist, and then Vivify Spam into the lowest health target, and then swap to the next lowest. In this situation, you should already have your Renewing Mist and everything out, so you are cleaving on to the other players in need of healing. But if the damage is too heavy, then you can just go ahead and send Shaylin's. Or, if you do have Cocoon available, you can also use that, but this is focusing more on not having cooldowns. If you're running upwelling for group wide damage, you can use your Thunder Focus T into your Essence Font with a full stack of upwelling, into some spot healing with Vivify and the Cleave, or once again, you can just use Shaylin's. That is always going to be an option available to you if you have enough stacks, but this can help more with your triage outside of having Shaylin's and not relying on that, or when there's more damage going out than you're ready for, that is going to also be an option. And then if you are not using upwelling, then you can just skip that step to go ahead and send Shaylin's, that is your best bet. Or if you don't have Shaylin's, then you can just do what you did for 2-3 to three targets and swap to the lowest health player and just spam them up, rely on the Vivify Cleave to kind of keep everyone else topped, and then swap when it starts to become too dangerous. And then if you have enough targets, like anywhere upwards of like 10 or so, then you can just drop Feyline and start spinning and do most of your healing through your Awakened Feyline. For our damage rotation, this is all done assuming that you are already standing in your Feyline, so you have your Awakened Feyline and Ancient Concordance buffs. For single target, we are going to be using Tiger Palm twice, splitting those stacks of Teachings of the Monastery with our Blackout Kick, and then using Rising Sun Kick, and we will prioritize Rising Sun Kick if it resets off of that Blackout Kick. This is not too different than what we were doing before, but now the main difference is that we will have four stacks of Teachings of the Monastery instead of two. Same deal for 2-3 to three target, except we are going to be adding in our Zen Pulse with Echoing Reverberation into our 2-3 to three target rotation. For 4-7 to seven targets, you're going to be using a Feline Stomp on cooldown, assuming you are not holding it somewhere for movement or for Ancient Teachings. This is purely for damage, so you do need to be careful about your placement with that, but other than that, it is just, again, Zen Pulse with Echoing Reverberation and Spinning Crane Kick Spam. And then at 7 targets or higher, Feyline drops off, Echoing Reverberation, Zen Pulse, and Spinning Crane Kick take over, and that is just a Spam Spinning Crane Kick. Given the nature of Mythic Plus, this is not always going to be what's happening. You may need to throw in some Rising Sun Kicks so you can keep your hot maintenance up if that's something that you need for the healing checkpoint of this. So this is ideal situations, but in Mythic Plus you're never going to have ideal situations, so it is always better to be flexible rather than optimal in a key setting, so that is just something to keep in mind for situations like this. Moving on to our strengths and weaknesses, this is always a hard list for me to make because I find myself comparing it to a couple of different things like past versions of Mistweaver versus other healers or more specifically the other melee healers, so I'm trying to be more general with this when it comes to just comparing Mistweaver to other healers. So we have high consistent damage and healing, this is something that we've kind of always had. That being said, our damage was a bit lacking in the single target department, but now that has been brought up to speed, so we do have high consistent damage and healing as of now. 
Miss Weaver is a very tanky healer inside of our cooldowns between Fort Brew, Dampen, Diffuse, Cocoon, Cheek Cocoon, and all of the passive auras that we have. We are fairly tanky during our cooldowns. Miss Weaver's mana is one of the better ones right now. This has been followed by the kind of resource philosophy change that Blizzard recently adapted. So now Miss Weaver has mana tea back. This gives us a lot of agency over what we spend and how we regain the mana in combat while also being able to utilize the mana reduction aspect of mana tea. So this is a really exciting change for us. We have short powerful cooldowns like Chi Ji being a 1 minute and Shaylin's Gift being a 40 second ish cooldown is something that is very nice as well as upwelling, though I don't really consider it a cooldown, it can kind of be used as a fake one. And lastly, we have really good group utility in CC, we have a plethora of things to use for crowd control like Ring of Peace, Paralysis, Leg Sweep, and then we also have our auras that we give for the group and there's not too many situations where you're going to be very far from your group so the uptime on those should be relatively high in addition to our revival which is our master spell and a couple other odds and ends one of them being high damage and high healing so i do think that we actually have a very good kit right now for mythic plus but to talk about the weaknesses i do want to touch on some things that i would like to see added to our kit even though we have received numerous changes to defensives and a little bit of a rework in that aspect, I still worry about our susceptibility to one-shots in high Mythic Plus. This is something that we have always struggled with, and it's only become more and more prevalent as the other healers have received reworks and we have not. I would love to see a stamina node added for our class tree. I know Brewmaster and Windwalker would also really appreciate that, but all the changes to bounce back and other defensives that we now have don't really prevent the one shot. So we are tankier now, but we still have the same issue we had before, it was just dying outside of cooldowns. If you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I have been complaining about this pretty consistently. We do not have a Brez or a Lust, and while this isn't an issue with the spec necessarily, it doesn't make it unplayable. It does make it harder for people to pick up, or it makes it harder to form groups around Mistweaver considering we are missing some non-negotiable pieces of utility. So that's something that doesn't affect our individual power, but it does make it harder to get into groups occasionally. This is something else I've been very vocal about. Having a normal melee range really is an unfortunate situation that we're in. I know that the hitboxes are the real issue here, but it's much easier just to add extended melee range for Miss Weaver, at least on our kick. I believe Miss Weaver or Monk as a class and Warriors are the only ones with a short range kick. So at the very least, I'd like extended range on our kick, like three yards, like everybody else, but realistically, there's no reason for us to not have the extended range that Paladin and Druids have. And lastly, there's just a couple of things that we have that don't really make sense, like Fort Brew being a ridiculously long cooldown for how weak it is of a cooldown, and Life Cocoon is a like one minute and 15 second cooldown instead of one minute, so it doesn't really line up with anything and makes things a little bit more awkward than they need to be, so again, I don't know if that's a weakness, but it is some stuff that just kind of makes it feel awkward to play. So overall, I think I got a little nitpicky with the weaknesses, but I do think that Season 3 and this tier is going to be very good for Miss Weaver, both in Raid and in Keys, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how all this pans out and how adjustments get made throughout the season. And then just a quick recommendation on weak auras and add-ons, I highly recommend grabbing my Feline Helper weak aura. This is the triangles you see kind of around my character. The dark blue means that I have the Feline buffs, although I am not currently in Feline. And the light blue means that I have the buffs and I am currently in Feline, which means that I have a chance at a reset. This is mostly just to help you with your uh, buff up time knowing when or when you're not going to be able to try to get a reset before moving on to the next pack, or also just knowing if you're in it or not, because sometimes Feyline gets crumpled up, it folds on terrain a lot, and it also can sometimes be hidden under mechanics and you can't see it at all. So highly recommend grabbing this just so you have it available to you. 
And then everyone does this differently. I prefer Voodoo, but definitely have some type of panel setup that allows you to prioritize and deprioritize debuffs and buffs, as well as maybe being able to add in some keybinds directly into the add-on because Mistweaver has a lot of buttons, we have a lot of spells, and being able to just put a couple of them into your frame specifically is super helpful. So I use Voodoo. I do also have a video on how to set up my profiles like this. I also have my profile, all my weak cores, everything available to everyone you don't need to sub that will be linked in the description as well on the very left is the raid ability timeline that works with bigwigs or dbm and it just kind of condenses all of your timers into this vertical list that is much easier for me to understand personally and it is honestly something that has changed raiding entirely for me especially as a misweaver since we are so reliant on hitting those timers and then on the right is just buff weak auras, uptime on those things, as well as the renewing mist tracker, which you definitely want to grab, especially for raid. I don't load it in keys, but in raid it's definitely something you want to pick up. But overall, you can do whatever you want with your UI, but these are just the ones that I feel like I would be lost without. And that brings us to the end of our guide. If you guys have any comments or questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitch or on Discord or in the comments. Like I said, I will have all of the sheets and everything linked below, as well as any other videos that I referenced throughout this video, just as additional help. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.